Hey everybody, welcome back to This Week in Vegas History. I'm your host, J.R. Swift, and we're going to continue talking a little bit about Vegas history today. That makes sense. Uh, last week we talked about the history of the D, going back to the Sundance and the Fitzgerald. Definitely go check that out if you haven't. This week we're going to talk about the rest of Fremont Street uh, as you approach Las Vegas Boulevard. So first, we're going to talk about the block across the street from the D, the only block we've discussed so far that does not have a casino or a hotel on the property. So, uh, but it does have uh, one of the most significant historical sites, although there's not much left of it other than a sign, and that is the El Portal Theater. If you look right next to the old Indian gift shop, which I believe is now closed, there is still a sign that says El Portal. The El Portal was the first theater in downtown Las Vegas, opened up in 1928, one of the first places to have air conditioning. So if you can imagine back then in the heat of the summer, as we're experiencing it now, and as Las Vegas has been experiencing it, hey, if you got a nickel, go to a double feature and get cool. Uh, the El Portal hung around for many years, perhaps the most famous event that took place at the El Portal was the world premiere of Ocean's Eleven way back in 1960. So a few celebrities in town for that. The El Portal was a fairly small theater though, and over time into the 60s and 70s, it became sort of outdated. Of course, it had some competition basically across the street, the old Fremont Theater, which we talked about a few weeks back. In 1978, the El Portal closed, and uh, uh, like I said, for many years, it was an Indian gift shop. Um, along that block now, you you know, you, again, you have a, one of those big gift shops. It's generic almost, so that was a pretty good size one. Um, you have the Harley Davidson shop, and then on the corner where you had the old Trader Bills for many years, and for even years past that, the somewhat famous Trader Bills sign that came down with the coming of White Castle to Las Vegas. And while I do enjoy a little White Castle now and then, it's uh, of course sad to see a Vegas historical landmark come down. Now we reached 4th Street and as we wait to cross 4th Street, we observe on our left hand side one of the most interesting debacles of downtown. Neonopolis. Of course, Neonopolis uh, came along in the early 2000s. Prior to that, this block had been fairly nondescript. Uh, if you look at fairly recent pictures, there was a White Cross drugstore sitting on one corner. Uh, that's the, probably the most recent business there prior to Neonopolis. There was also a number of personal residences along this block for a time. And on the far east corner, you had a Woolworth store. Uh, those all ended around 1998, and the area became a parking structure until Neonopolis would take it over a few years later, opening up in 2003. Now, it's fair to say Neonopolis has not been one of the great success stories in Las Vegas history. Um, many businesses have come and gone. Many dreams have been born and died in Neonopolis. As a couple of examples, the Star Trek Experience exhibit that was at the Las Vegas Hilton for many years was supposed to move to Neonopolis, and well, somehow that didn't happen. For a time, the Liberace Museum was supposed to relocate to Neonopolis, and that didn't happen. Right now, it is distinguished mostly by a fairly successful Denny's, the infamous Heart Attack Grill, and the uh, Diamond in the Rough. Lovely little banger brewing, one of my favorite places downtown. Most of these success stories are places where you can access directly from the street, but if you walk inside the Neonopolis, it has a kind of soul sucking quality. It just feels like the kind of place you're going to run into a zombie. So, whoever was responsible for building the place, I don't know. There is a uh, kind of an interesting uh, piano bar, karaoke lounge there. Uh, for years, there was a little toy shop inside, and like I said, just odd things have popped up here and there on Neonopolis, but it is certainly not uh, 
been a great success. In fact, I'm surprised, honestly, it's still there. So hopefully uh, they will grow and prosper. Across the street from Neonopolis, you have something even more fabulous, a Walgreens. And it was actually one of the earliest Walgreens in Las Vegas. Now you can't swing a dead cat without hitting one. Uh, definitely serves a purpose, and not just for tourists, but a lot of residents uh, in the downtown area able to pick up some supplies right there. Most of the block is a parking garage for the uh, Fremont Street experience. Of course, at the end of the block, you get the Hennessy's Tavern with the very distinctive giant glass of beer. Who couldn't use a giant glass of beer right now? I think I'll have some. Of course, between 4th and 5th Street, you also have access to the Slotzilla uh, zip line, which will allow you to fly all the way down Fremont Street. Then you can walk back, and then you can have a Guinness, and that'll be fun. So anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up our discussion of uh, Fremont Street for this week. Now, next week, We'll talk a little bit about the Fremont East District and about the El Cortez. After that, we'll turn our attention to the south and make our way down Las Vegas Boulevard, eventually reaching the fabulous Strip. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any memories about the businesses we talked about today, uh, definitely leave them in the comments below. Let me know if there's any other Vegas history segments you'd like to hear us talk about in the future. Until then, I hope you have a historically good week. We'll see you soon.